welcome to the show. It covers over 70% of the earth, but over 700 million people lack safe access to it, water. According to water.org, 3.4 million people die each year as a result of unclean water, poor sanitation, and bad hygiene. In Latin America, one country is especially troubled by this water crisis. Nicaragua is among the poorest countries in Central America. And while efforts since 2010 have put many in urban areas closer to better water sources, much of the rural population still lives without it. Correspondent Nita Soledad Perez takes us to one Nicaraguan community where the desire for pure drinking water was so strong, it took a whole village waging an uphill battle to quench its thirst. It's known as a land of lakes and volcanoes, a Central American nation rich in freshwater resources. But in rural Nicaragua, water is a scarce commodity. Little is safe to drink or even readily accessible. This is daily life at Agua Fria, a community at the end of a dirt road 18 kilometers from Ciudad Darío. Elba Espinosa is 55 years old. She spent the last 13 years going down this trail to get water. Some days, four times. I wake up at 3.30 in the morning, then we leave around 4.30. We come back around 6.30 with our first water load. It's hard on us because it's far away. We also have to go down to the spring to wash our clothes. It takes Elba almost an hour and a half to get to the spring and another hour and a half to come back. She carries the water in these buckets, and from them, she'll drink and cook later in the day. Only half of Nicaragua's rural population has access to water. That leaves another 1.5 million without a drop. The government, I wouldn't say it's their fault, but certainly the government doesn't have enough funding to, to go and build about 1,000 or 10,000 different water projects, be it wells or, or gravity flow water systems or whatever. Rob Bell is executive director of El Porvenir, an NGO that has been operating in Nicaragua for 23 years. Its goal? To provide safe, clean drinking water for a population that doesn't know it's underserved. So there's certainly a lack of funding. Uh, and also some of the communities, they don't, they don't always realize that, that the, drink, the water they're drinking is bad. They've, all their lives, they've been drinking this water. They, they, they think they're fine. But when they, have, when they do have clean water, then they notice, certainly notice a difference in their health, and they don't get sick as often. But they've been doing it this whole, their fathers did it this way, their grandfathers, grandmothers, they drank this water. Why can't I? Other organizations work in inhospitable areas of Nicaragua, but the ones we visited in the northern part of the country had only received assistance from El Porvenir. Accompanied by members of this organization, we walked several kilometers to get to Los Cerritos, a small town of 28 families. For years, they've been without water, but that may soon change. This is a fountainhead. What we did is the study, if it was feasible to feed all the community of Los Cerritos with this source, this spring right here. What we did is we built a tank to store the water and from here, through a pipe system, take it to their community using the force of gravity. Community members have spent over a year digging this trench, a place for their new water pipe. My grandmother died at 100. She could remember her grandfather and great-grandfather going up and down the hill, pushing water with the horse or walking the four kilometers. It's a fate Claudia Gutierrez wants to avoid, so he organized a water committee. I felt so bad looking at the kids going to school, many times without taking a shower, and the other kids would make fun of them. I would tell them, don't laugh. Can't you see the problem we're facing? Before Ana Sequeira got married and started a family, she lived in a community that had a well. But when she moved to Los Cerritos, she had to make major adjustments. I've been living here 32 years. It's been a sacrifice since I moved, going down to find water pockets to bring water, 
to do laundry and even to get water to drink. But then cholera came to this area, and then the Ministry of Health told us not to use standing rainwater and instead go down to the spring. Waterborne illnesses are a major barrier to development in Nicaragua. In many rural villages, families drink untreated water from rivers and streams polluted with fecal matter and pathogens. According to UNICEF, a child dies every 15 seconds from diseases attributable to unsafe drinking water. Things have changed over the years too. There's more, more pesticide use, there's more, more, more people, more concentration, so there's more open defecation, there's more contamination in the water, so people are getting, are getting sicker. Only 52% of Nicaragua's population has access to improved sanitation. That's well below the average of other countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. So we need to invest like 45 billion uh, to get universal access in, in water and sanitation. Uh, but we have found that uh, more than the lack of resources is the lack of institutional capacity. The capacity of the countries to organize the sector, to invest in the right things uh, in the, at the right time uh, is very difficult in some countries. and. That's why uh, we are in this situation. Communities trying to change that statistic are sharing best practices. Like Las Mesas, the model town that is inspiring other communities to take steps to safeguard their water, one drop at a time. Before 2006, the residents of the community of Las Mesas would have to hike about four kilometers, two up and two down, to come here to this well to get water for their daily tasks. This is a trail they had to go through every day. It's uphill and muddy. Crossing it while hauling 20 kilos of water is a dangerous task, but that's not the only malady. We have estimated that over 200 million of hours per year are wasted uh, in, in the region because of the lack of access to water supply in the house. And we have found this, that the worst part of, the, of this problem is run by the women and children, because that's the people who the family uh, used to get the water for home. Fortunately for Las Mesas, that's a problem they no longer face. The town has water distribution, built by a perforated well and a submersible pump that sends the water to a tank located on a hill and lets gravity distribute it to every home in town. Meters and readers keep residents informed of the water bill. They then pay. Jesus Vega is a community organizer of Las Mesas. He knew that potable water was worth the fight. I would constantly tell these politicians that water has no religious or political affiliation. Water is for everyone, and we all need it to survive. For now, community leaders and independent organizations are left doing the heavy lifting to quench the thirst of the underserved. Back at Los Cerritos, still one more kilometer to dig before water can reach homes. But even at one kilometer away, it's the closest it's ever been. Since she filed this report, correspondent Nisa Soledad Perez stayed in touch with the village of Los Cerritos, and they recently shared some good news with her. Their water project has been completed, and they now have safe running water just outside their homes. Nicaragua's First Lady, Rosario Murillo, has also been catalyst for change when it comes to solving the country's water problem. She has helped develop several projects with government utility companies to extend water and sanitation networks and increase the supply of clean drinking water.